OceanGate's Titan submarine started its journey from the St. John Port, Canada. The location where it had to dive in the ocean is located in the North Atlantic Ocean, 700 kilometers away from the St. John. At the same point, beneath the cold waters, lies the shipwreck of the Titanic in the depths of the ocean. This journey was initiated on Saturday, the 17th of June, 2023. And according to the plan, Titan was to be launched at 8 o'clock in the morning on the next day, Sunday. Let me tell you here that a problem was noticed in Titan before the dive. Despite that, the decision was made to lower it into the ocean at the risk of one's life. What was the issue? And why was the risk taken despite knowing the potential danger? Welcome back once again to Enigma Epic's video. Guys, a total of five people were on the trip, including Hamish Harding, the founder of Ocean Aviation. He had also traveled to space with Jeff Bezos. Second is Stockton Rush, who was also the CEO of OceanGate, an American company that provides submersibles for ocean tourism. In the third place was 77-year-old Paul Henry, who had visited the Titanic before. He was an expert on shipwrecks and had a lot of knowledge about the shattered parts of the Titanic. And finally, Pakistani business tycoon Shahzada Dawood, along with his son Suleiman, was a part of the same submarine. On the 17th of June, before the dive, Hamish Harding had made his last post on the internet. He said that their dive has been delayed due to severe cold weather. Tomorrow morning, when the weather will be better for a while, we will dive. These five people were going to see the wreck of the famous Titanic to fulfill their passion. After sinking in 1912, efforts to find it continued for the next several years. But due to the harsh conditions of the Atlantic Ocean, this task was not so easy. Then, in 1985, finally, the wreckage of RMS Titanic was found on the ocean floor. Titanic had left so many questions behind that it was time to find the answers. Dozens of expeditions were arranged, in which experts and researchers from different countries visited the Titanic shipwreck. Canadian filmmaker James Cameron made dozens of tours of the Titanic wreck in 1995, and then the Titanic movie was released in 1997. What else remained was completed by the success of Titanic movie. It created such a sensation that now visiting the Titanic's wreckage has become a dream for millions of people themselves. It means that this achievement is not limited to just research anymore, but tourists have also started going to the shipwreck site. It is said that going to the depths of the ocean is even more challenging than traveling to space. And the biggest reason for this is the pressure of water. The Titanic shipwreck is 4,000 meters, for example, four kilometers below sea level. If you want to imagine this depth, you should look at Burj Khalifa and understand that the wreckage of Titanic is about five times lower than the height of Burj Khalifa in the sea. The water pressure at this depth is 5,800 PSI. This would be the same pressure that not on the entire body of a human being, but only on a one square inch, an entire elephant were to be placed. So now you can estimate how many square inches there will be in a submarine and how much pressure will be exerted on it. Well, Sunday the 18th of June, 2023, the submarine journey started at 12 noon. Normally it takes about two hours to reach the Titanic, but after an hour and 45 minutes, the mothership, Polar Prince, which was waiting above, lost contact with the submarine. If it was supposed to take two hours to reach the Titanic, losing contact just 15 minutes earlier indicates that the submarine had already gotten quite close to the Titanic. It is impossible for sunlight to reach this depth of the ocean, and here there is always extremely intense darkness. It is normal for the wireless signal to break at such a depth. Therefore, initially this matter wasn't taken too seriously. The entire trip was a total of seven hours. They were supposed to return from 12 noon until 7 in the evening. However, when there was still no contact with Titan by 7 in the evening, and they didn't return, the crew aboard the mothership started to get anxious. Canadian research vessel Polar Prince started searching for Titan. At 9.40, they contacted the U.S. Coast Guard and asked for help. The next day, Monday, U.S. and Canadian ships and planes started a proper search operation in the entire area. They continued their search, 
not only on the surface of the sea but also underwater with the help of sonar scanning commercial vessels in the area, were also instructed to keep a vigilant watch. The search continued for the next two days, but there was no trace of Titan found. But then, there was a glimmer of hope. On Wednesday, the 21st of June, at 6 in the morning, the search team heard some noises from the depths of the water. These sounds were heard with the help of underwater radars. Immediately, ROVs were sent in the direction of the sound, but this time, too, there was no news of Titan. Now, the fear of losing Titan forever was growing stronger. Because the amount of oxygen in the submarine was only for 96 hours or four days, and by that time, three out of four days had passed. But the search teams of US, Canada, and France did not give up. On Thursday, the 22nd of June at 12 noon, ROVs were sent to the wreck of the Titanic. What was seen there was truly a heart-wrenching sight. At 3.48 p.m., the ROV that had approached the wreckage of the Titanic saw part of the Titan's tail lying only 1,600 feet away from the Titanic. Who went to see the wreck of the Titanic? Now its own wreckage has become the headlines of the whole world. This only means that the submarine could not withstand the pressure of the water and imploded in the depths of the ocean. This news caused a stir in the whole world. Many questions were raised on the safety of OceanGate. OceanGate's CEO Stockton Rush, who himself lost his life in this incident. He said in 2021 that he knew he had broken some rules while making Titan, because he made the Titan not from steel, but from aviation-grade carbon fiber. But he wanted to bring some new innovations to the industry, which is why carbon fiber was used by replacing steel. For the first time, before launch, Titan was tested at pressures of 5,000 to 10,000 PSI, which it had passed. However, experts believe that there are thousands of different forces that impact submarines, in which there is not only pressure, but also flow of water which is created due to waves. Additionally, due to the darkness, it is also possible that a heavy rock or sea creature may have hit the submarine. Whatever the case, one reason for Titan's demise was its carbon fiber hull. However, another reason was the presence of pre-existing cracks in it. Yes, in 2019, the Titan submarine also carried a businessman named Carl Stanley, and at that time too, it was being operated by OceanGate's CEO. Carl mentioned that during that trip, as they were descending, he heard a cracking sound coming from Titan's hull. Point, I was actually even able to drive the submarine towards deeper water by the sound of the cracking getting louder. At that time, he didn't pay much attention to that sound because he had full confidence in OceanGate's CEO, who had designed the submarine himself. But after the accident, he told CNN that the sound might have been a warning that the Titan's body could not withstand the pressure of the water. If this is true, then there is no doubt that cracks had started to develop in Titan's hull beforehand. In 2018, an OceanGate's executive spoke out against Titan's carbon fiber body. Their statement was that this issue would only become evident a few milliseconds before the implosion of the submarine. And in reality, that's exactly what happened. At the depth where Titan imploded, experts believe that it would have taken only about 0.3 seconds for it to collapse. I hope you will like and share this video of Enigma Epics, and don't forget to subscribe our channel.